episode of Threat Track. We have a great panel planned out for you today, all about Log4j and the vulnerability that came out at the end of last year. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Log4j, it's a logging utility widely used in the Java community. In late November of last year, researchers found a vulnerability and reported it to Apache. So basically, the vulnerability allowed you hackers to hijack the library's JNDI lookup and execute remote code on the vulnerable boxes. At that point, only Apache and the researchers knew. Unfortunately, there wasn't a patch available. Two days later, on December 10th, Apache was able to rush out a patch. And at that point, everybody could start to remediate that vulnerability. If your machines are still vulnerable, organizations are urged to upgrade their Log4j to 2.17.1 if you are on Java 8. If you are on Java 7, you're urged to upgrade to 2.12.4. And if you're using Java 6, you're urged to upgrade to 2.3.2. And of course, continue to review and monitor the Apache Log4j security vulnerability webpage for updates on mitigation guidance. This was a very unusual case on how this vulnerability was released to the public. So with your guys' experiences, how do those rollouts usually occur? And how was this one different? Yeah, and I'll maybe touch on, you know, Katie, you went through how this wasn't necessarily responsibly disclosed or didn't follow the typical path. Um, and given how easy this was to exploit, how widely it was used, uh, you almost have to wonder if, if that even had an impact here. Because once that got disclosed, you would have kind of the same um, reaction, right? You'd have kind of all these attackers coming and how easy it was for them to exploit. Uh, a lot of the systems that would have been uh, seen on the internet utilize this throughout. So um, the easy access to exploit, uh, the amount that's seen across the internet in, in addition to inside companies uh, caused this to be something that had to be spun up very quickly and a lot of remediation needed to be handled in a very short period of time. You know, this was a, a, an open source vulnerability. So uh, open source packages use uh, what's commonly referred to as a jar in a jar or an embedded package. Uh, so oftentimes application teams didn't realize that they were impacted by this particular uh, vulnerability. So that, that exacerbated the number of applications that were impacted by this particular bug. So Tony, how did this go from your perspective? There's uh, two major components whenever we're dealing with a, a broad issue. Um, and these two components were um, very effective with, with how we ran Log4j within the company. And those are communication and situational awareness. These two items are very key for anything that we do from an IR perspective. And if it wasn't for uh, trying to focus on these two aspects, uh, it would have been uh, a much different story. But basically, when it comes down to it is once this was announced, uh, two groups immediately were spun up. One dealt and focused on the communication, and that is not only between the, the technical teams, but also the business unit stakeholders, uh, management, all these different aspects within the company to make sure that they were, one, keyed in, two, engaged. And from that uh, perspective, that's where the situational awareness comes in, where this was announced. We had some various various technical teams that went out, looked at it, did our research, broke it down to assess and come up with recommendations and mitigations for this threat. Now, uh, pulling these two together is definitely key because for the situational awareness, uh, they need to be able to provide that information out to the various stakeholders, business units, uh, and other organizations within the company to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Uh, their research um, for this situation, there was numerous patches, so that had to go into like a rinse and repeat. And then in addition to that, bridging the communication, they also had to do a rinse and repeat to make sure that all the stakeholders were aware. So it sounds like there's a lot of chaos there, but uh, this is a process that uh, we have uh, in place and we've had in place for a very long time. So luckily for the Log4j situation, we were able to just bring up this process 
So we had various groups that really were netted in and working together. Uh, and that is how uh, we were able to accomplish what we did from an incident response perspective. Now, the one thing that I want to turn to would be global. You know, what happened globally here? Um, I can't speak for other companies and what they did to mitigate this, but I will tell you from a global perspective, the amount of communication across the social media feeds, various researchers, uh, in addition to some of the things that we saw that were uh, more nefarious in nature through, through monitoring and, and scanning, we were able to communicate into the company. We were able to pivot on those different things. And uh, from that information sharing uh, across the global community, I believe that um, a lot of companies really were able to handle this very well. As things were changing so, so fast and just how unique right, this specific vulnerability was, you had um, a lot of obfuscation right, with some of the strings we were seeing from a detection uh, capability. You had the, the DNS lookup capability where maybe if your application wasn't exactly um, responding or didn't have a way to respond, you know, outbound, you could still do DNS lookup. So a lot of the information was getting posted. You had proof of concepts, right, that were getting posted. Um, so really able to get our own research and observation and then, you know, marry that with what other people were reporting. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, I mean, with this Log4j uh, issue, there were two patches that came out within the span of a week. Uh, you know, so the teams really had to monitor uh, the, the Apache site that uh, Katie mentioned earlier, uh, looking for, OK, what is the latest on this particular issue? And then adjust plans, adjust the response uh, as we were moving forward. So, uh, you know, the the amount of communication and coordination that was required for an event such as this was significant. Having those processes documented for the people who are coming after was extremely important so that they knew what we had done before, what had worked, what hadn't worked, and making sure the discussion amongst our team was very strong during that time. So with all that, I want to turn it over to Jason and, you know, uh, what sort of information do you have when it comes down to lessons learned? So how should we better prepare for the next Log4j event? There are several areas businesses large and small can focus on as they continue their Log4j response and periodically update as part of general maintenance of, the, of their IT infrastructure. The first and likely most important in any Log4j event or cybersecurity event in general is your, your attack surface. Uh, you want to make sure that it's hardened from uh, external threats uh, using common um, mechanisms such as firewalls, IDS, IPS, uh, you know, all of the things that we normally talk about in blocking and tackling within cybersecurity. But it's also important to monitor the uh, internal networks. So what you may consider as a, uh, a vendor network, a third party network that your network is connected to that you don't have visibility to. Uh, you're not going to know whether that third party is patching. Uh, you're not going to know whether that third party has least privileges applied. So the onus is going to be on you to make sure that you're applying those principles to the connection points of those networks, even if those networks aren't connected to the internet. Uh, if we can stop the attack from getting in the network, that the battle is halfway won right there. Mm -hmm. So the second area that we'll focus on is something that you've heard a lot about in the news, uh, and that's supply chain security. Uh, in regards to application security, uh, this is often manifested in what's called a software bill of material. That software bill of material is going to be a list of all components that comprise an application source code. So we've talked about the hardened attack surface. We've talked about supply chain security. Uh, finally, and most importantly, especially for Log4j, is vulnerability event management. So you've heard Tony and Katie touch on uh, incident response. Incident response is looking at uh, individual events, uh, very detailed, very technical oriented. Vulnerability event management is where we transition from a very technical aspect into a broader approach where we're making sure that communications are uh, fast and efficient, uh, that we have all of the necessary technical SMEs engaged uh, to create the job aids that will provide direction to application security SMEs. Uh, as well as providing leadership reporting so that the leaders understand the total risk posture of that particular organization. 
Uh, as we look forward to the next Log4j type event, uh, it will be important for vulnerability event managers to practice, uh, to drill on the processes uh, that will be important for their company. Does Do the vulnerability event managers know uh, where to go to monitor for exploits? Uh, CISA has a very good website. It's called the Known Exploitation uh, Packages. Uh, from there, uh, do they know the appropriate SMEs in the technical silos to uh, review each particular exploit with to determine impacts for that particular organization? Do they understand where they need to go to sound the alarm uh, for the level of the event? The, the vulnerability event teams can use the exploits that are within uh, the CISA exploit package to create drills uh, and create a, a stair step or a level system so that they understand to what extent should we respond to the next uh, event that, that is uh, published. Vulnerability event management is absolutely crucial to a proper response to a log4j level event, uh, but it, it, it works in concert with the incident response. Uh, so, Katie and Tony, how do you view the vulnerability event management and the incident response working together to, when a log4j type event uh, comes up? I think it's extremely important um, to have a very flexible and detailed, not necessarily detailed, but have it documented out so that the, the people who are using it know what to do, know where to go to get information and who the contacts are for your vulnerability management team. I know that during this event, the communication between the teams were extremely important, making sure that everything that was coming in, everything that was being worked was talked about across the team so that duplicate work wasn't happening, especially with so much going on. With interacting with vulnerability management, it is something that I feel for any situation that there needs to be. Uh, a communication, an understanding to find out uh, from a vulnerability perspective what's out there, what the exposures are, so we can in turn uh, build remediation plans and processes and, and try to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of, um, of just vulnerabilities because they're always going to be there. So Jason, you mentioned uh, hardening the attack surface. And one of the things that companies need to account for as they start utilizing public cloud is that you know they don't own that perimeter anymore, right? So you think about the different models in public cloud, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. And as you kind of move up that stack, you have less and less opportunity to do network perimeter defense. And you're almost moving to more of an identity-driven um, perimeter. And in this case, if you think about it, it was really interesting because you, know, you could have been logging, you likely were logging in your um, authentication forms. So you're capturing usernames and logging and potentially were vulnerable there, right? So as companies are starting to leverage public cloud, this is where it's really important to understand exactly what services you're using, ensure you have monitoring and logging in place. Yeah, absolutely, Mike, thanks. Uh, you know, I, I would even throw out zero trust, right? So th this is not a new concept in cybersecurity, but as we're evaluating these events that, that are going to happen in the future, how does zero trust play a factor in that? Uh, so all of these are, are good points, Mike. A lot of training, um, a lot of um, practice, basically. Uh, practice makes permanent when it comes down to doing incident response, you know, the uh, techniques and, and just how to handle situations like this. Log4j was a little different from that aspect because, you know, uh, working with, you know, cloud environments or endpoints and EDR solutions, uh, uh, servers uh, on their own, you know, it's it's something that is that muscle memory, but uh, dealing with a a logging um, software and how it affects was was something that was relatively different compared to some of the stuff that you know we as investigators deal with. So having the technical uh, folks come in and say, "This is what we use it for. Uh, this is where it's normally uh, placed." Um, I have this application, but I wasn't aware that uh, Log4j um, could have affected it. That sort of uh, knowledge during this situation um, is definitely key. So I also felt that you know one thing we did well was you know you uh, identify assets, you assess them, uh, you um, prioritize you know which assets you want to initially look at for mitigation. I thought we did a good job of that. I thought overall you can always improve, but I thought we did a pretty good job 
of uh, getting all the information together and, and making the right decisions on where we wanted to focus. So, so one other thing I know I personally, I guess, enjoyed, if you could, uh, was, you know, you had all these different techniques coming out in real time uh, and how you could detect or respond, you know, and, and we really uh, kind of embraced that, right? And there was a willingness to pursue and at least understand and evaluate all those options. You know, the vendors had not uh, added scanning support yet, right? So we we're doing some homegrown scanning, some self-service scanning. If an application team, you know, wanted to be able to identify if they were vulnerable, uh, there was even this vaccination where you could use the vulnerability to temporarily patch, right, an application. So, uh, you know, again, it was just interesting to see how that all played out as things changed so quickly. Right. And on top of the self-service scanning that the app teams could do, you know, we did homegrown as well as vendor-supported network monitoring for the Log4j uh, signature. Uh, all of those things were very rapidly developed and very rapidly deployed. Again, going back to the collaboration uh, that the, the multi-teams at AT&T exhibited throughout this event. So if we pivot, um, what are some things we should keep in mind for future events? Uh, I think one, I think I touched on earlier, maybe Jason, um, is you know as these vulnerabilities, especially as these, these various rounds of patching came out, you know, I'm not a Java developer, I, I understood kind of the basis and the primitive. So engaging SMEs to really understand the risk, uh, doing a deeper assessment, I guess, beyond what we were reading in reports and maybe the CVE scoring. So Jason also touched on this, inventory is critical, uh, both asset and software. So for example, in the cloud space, you had to leverage you know, the provider's advisories to understand which services may be impacted, where maybe you had an action, where you didn't have an action, maybe you just needed to rely on your monitoring. I know we each focus on different aspects. Does anyone have any things to keep in mind for future events? Uh, I would say, you know, just recap on all of the things that we've talked about. Uh, obviously, cybersecurity is a, a massive field. There's a lot that can be done. Uh, but if you're just new to the field or, or you're a small business owner who may not know where to focus on, look at the five topics that we talked about today. Uh, incident response, security hardening of your attack surface, uh, your supply chain security. So software bill of material, device bill of material, service bills of material, uh, and then vulnerability event management. Uh, a, a team that's as small as five would benefit from having a, vul a vulnerability event management drills uh, that engage all five of those aspects so that all five understand when to respond, what the expectations are when they respond, uh, and how to continuously monitor for the next Log4j type of event to come along. Jason, to to add to that, um, I, I I'd like to uh, put in there that you know for for any business that's looking at this and wants to um, improve um, tabletop exercises, just walking through with with a couple of the other teams just talking through how I would pass it over to you and this is what I would look at, you know, those sorts of exercises, um, they, they help us. And I highly recommend tabletop exercises for, um, for anyone that's, that's watching this. The tabletop exercises has helped tremendously. I'd also say making sure documentation is up to date. So if you have an IR plan, just making sure that that's flexible and continuously updating that as you go. That's also extremely helpful. Yeah, and I'll, I'll echo again for the tabletop exercises and not only how you can identify and respond, but where you may have gaps, gaps in your monitoring, gaps in your logging. I think it's just very important to remember um, to try and be the person you would want to work with in those situations. So keep your cool, keep things light and understand that everybody, nobody necessarily wants to be in the situation. So work together to make a good environment for everyone. I want to thank everybody for viewing and thank you so much to our panelists. You guys were fantastic as usual. Um, I just would like to ask any viewers to like or subscribe below. And if you have any comments or any experiences you want to add to the comments below, we would love to hear about your Log4j experiences. Thank you so much. See you next time.